In this very brief uh, lecture about ecology, we're just going to cover the, the super basic um, concepts that you need to know for ecology in order to uh, learn more about biodiversity and biomes in general. So first we should talk about what is ecology. There's many different definitions out here, so this is just one, but they all basically discuss the fact that um, ecology is a field of study, so there are scientists called ecologists that study ecology. And this field of study examines interactions with, of living things. And so that can mean interactions between living creatures of the same species or interactions between um, living uh, um, organisms that are from different species. And that can include plants, animals, bacteria, fungi, a lot of different living species. Um, and then also how they interact with, with climate, so how they're impacted by climate and other environmental factors such as natural resources that would influence their survival. You've probably heard the term ecosystem before. An ecosystem simply refers to a biological system of interdependent organisms that live in a specific region. Um, and then sometimes you might hear the, tone, the term ecotone. Ecotone is simply a transition region between two different ecosystems. So in the picture that I have on this slide, you can see there's like a forest ecosystem at the bottom of the picture. And then as you climb up the mountain as the cl and the climate changes and the amount of rainfall changes and the soils change, temperature changes, all of this changes and so that impacts what can live here. And so this green area here where you see some shrubs as you get up to the top of the mountain, this would be your ecotone. And then this region near the top of the mountain is a different ecosystem altogether. Food chains are simply um, the way we represent the transfer of energy from one organism to another as you travel up the trophic levels of a different of different ecosystems. And so in this there's two different food chains on this slide. The first one is an aquatic food chain. So in this case, algae is the primary producer. That means that algae is taking in energy from the sun and carbon dioxide and it's using the sun's energy to convert carbon dioxide um, to sugars, which are then stored in the algae. Algae is consumed by mollusks, and so some of that energy is transferred to the mollusk, and which, is, which is then in turn consumed by the slimy sculpin. Um, some of that energy is transferred to the slimy sculpin, and then finally the Chinook salmon eats the slimy sculpin. And so energy is transferred up this food chain and going from producers all the way up to the tertiary consumers. If we look at um, the other image on this slide, is this is a terrestrial food chain. In a terrestrial food chain, that means it's on, on Earth. I mean, not, not plain Earth, but on the ground, on soil systems. And in this case, you have a plant that is fixing carbon dioxide and converting it into sugar using energy from the sun to catalyze that reaction. And then the, the sugar energy gets transferred to grasshoppers, which are in, in turn consumed by birds. Uh, snakes can eat the eggs of the birds, and owls can eat snakes and eggs from the birds. So this would be a, a different type of food chain, but still the idea that you're traveling from primary con producers up to primary consumers, secondary consumer, and tertiary consumers. So we call all of these animals in the food chain c consumers because they cannot take energy directly from the sun and produce sugars, and so they aren't considered producers. They consume energy that has been already fixed by producers. Producers are the basis of all of our food chains, and they're wonderful because they, they produce sugars. That's why they're called producers. Sugars are a form of chemical energy, and so when you eat food, that's chemical energy that you're consuming, and that energy was harnessed from the sun. So um, they use the basic reaction, photosynthetic reaction, 
which is shown here. So carbon dioxide, which is from the atmosphere, is taken up by a plant um, and it reacts with water, which is also taken up by the plant from um, generally from soil. So water is taken up through the roots of the plant. Um, or plants can simply take in the water through their leaves if, it, if there's precipitation or mist that, that's on the leaves. So carbon dioxide comes from the atmosphere, water comes from the soil or precipitation landing on the top of the plant, and then sun energy catalyzes the reaction so that carbon dioxide and water can form sugar. And sugars are what make up the plant tissue and then oxygen is released in this reaction. So this photosynthetic reaction is why plants are so important to us because they produce oxygen for us. So um, in, this, in this reaction you can see we're making sugars and then of course we said that that's what travels up the food chain as a source of energy. Food chains are, are wonderful at describing the relationship between producers and consumers or you could also think of it as describing the relationship between producers and decomposers if you're looking at decomposition of plant material. Um, but they're very oversimplified representations of what actually is happening, happening in an ecosystem. And so generally we have to use food webs instead of food chains to describe how energy is transferred within an ecosystem. Um, and a food web is just like a food chain, except it's looking at interconnected food chains within an ecosystem. So this is an example of the soil food web, and so this is more of like a decomposer food web. Um, you can see there are still trophic levels, so the trophic level here, level here is plants. Plants are our photosynthesizers. They're the ones fixing that accreting sugar or fixing carbon dioxide and converting it into sugar and um, and from there you have the the decomposers and then predators which are grazing on the decomposers and then predators that that pre that are predating on the smaller um, predators and then finally higher level predators like uh, moles and birds but you can see there's multiple critters at each different trophic level, and that's why this is a food web and not a food chain. Okay, so if you don't remember much else from this talk, I'm hoping you'll remember this slide and how, how biomass and energy are transferred through the food chain or food web, depending on how you're looking at it. Um, so light energy is, so the sun, that is what provides all of the energy for the producers. And from there, all of the energy is just transferred from producers up. So the main source of energy for all life on Earth is the sun. The sun is necessary for all of us. So the sun is used, it's harnessed, that energy from the sun is harnessed by the producers, which converts it into a chemical form of energy, which is sugar. And then from there, the energy is transferred up through the food chain. Each time you go from one trophic level up to the next, you lose energy. So when you go from the producers to the primary consumers, 90% of the energy is lost. It's lost to heat, and then it can be lost to waste material that isn't fully um, digested or decomposed. And so each time we transfer up the food chain, only about 10% of the energy that is that is harnessed or that is um, scavenged in that food chain actually will make it to the next level of the food chain. And so it's not a very efficient process. So just to summarize the take home points from that last slide, the sun is a source of energy for plants, which are the producers at the bottom trophic level. And thus, sun is the source of energy for all of our trophic levels and for all life on Earth. Energy transfer occurs from one trophic level to the next, and it's only about 10% efficient. So we lose 90% of the energy when you go from one level to the next, and that's lost due to heat and waste. There is one exception to this rule um, about the sun, and that's when you're talking about ecosystems very deep in the ocean. There are some 
ecosystems that are powered by um, some alternative energy sources, we will say, um, but those are pretty rare and um, definitely an exception to the rule. Okay, so if you'd like to visit some of the resources that can provide you with more details about these topics, I've listed some here. Uh, thanks for listening. <laughs>